Poker is super thrilling and filled with intense feelings. It's packed with huge wins, clever tricks, and nail-biting decisions, making it a blast to play and a spectacle to watch. Emotions are always on edge, making every game unpredictable. Most players work hard to keep their cool, sticking to both the official rules and the unspoken ones that guide how to act. Yet, now and then, someone steps over that subtle boundary. And that's why today we're taking a look at the incredible poker hands that shocked the world. We'll start this list with one of the most famous poker hands. I'd probably assume you've already seen this one. This one revolves around two colorful poker players, Tony G and Phil Helmuth. And Tony's actions are stirring up some controversy. Here's the scene. Helmuth is playing with a small stack of chips in a cash game, which annoys Tony. Tony sees this as a chance to grab Phil's chips and push him to either buy more chips or leave the game. When Tony sees he has AK while facing a raise from Phil, he sees his opportunity. Tony effectively goes all in, and Phil, holding AJ, finds himself in a tough spot. He's aware he's facing off against a bold player who has some personal issues with him. But here's where it gets heated. Tony G claims he didn't even look at his hand before going all in. Flop number three. Queen, queen, king, and Phil picks up some outs. Ooh, now he needs a 10 and backdoor spades. Well, that's actually better. There's four 10s, there was only three jacks. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad, like the 10's out as well. Even if Phil hits the 10, Tony can still make a full house. Something, I mean, and then a backdoor flush. No space gone. After pondering for a moment, Phil decides to trust Tony's claim and makes the call. Confident that his AJ is in a strong position against whatever random cards Tony is suggesting he holds. However, his optimism is short-lived as he receives the disappointing news, accompanied by a taunt from Tony. Yet another needle from Tony. Our final river, Phil's gonna need a 10. It's a jack. Whoa, he got there! That's not cool. No, he didn't. No, sorry. <laughs> I was just joking, Phil. <laughs> Did you believe me again? Was no, that bad etiquette too? So Tony, <laughs> so look, you're loaning me 50,000, right? Yeah. Okay, look, I, I don't accept it. Okay, no problem. But good game, man. All right, I'm sorry, Phil. I really am. I'm sorry. I think we should retire. I think it's over. I think you, you're not there anymore, Phil. Helmuth appears stunned that Tony would deceive him about his hand, but Tony remains unapologetic. Of course I lied, he retorts. It's poker, Phil. Oh, you lied. Of course I lied. It's poker, Phil. While it's certainly not a gentlemanly move and not something you'd want to encounter at your local card game, it serves as a reminder to never blindly trust the words of your opponents in poker. Moving on, this next one is among the most controversial poker hands from the 2009 main event involving Estelle Denise and a beautiful pair of pocket aces. With a relatively small stack of chips, Estelle was likely overjoyed to see she had two aces after JC Tran raised the bet to 32,000. She quickly went all in, pushing her chips to the center, but forgot to safeguard her cards for a brief moment. In that short time, the dealer mistakenly thought her cards were discarded and mixed them into the muck. Denise noticed the error within seconds, but it was already too late. Her cards had been blended into the discard pile beyond retrieval. That's used to work in sports marketing. And there is Estelle Denny of Paris, France, who's in the hand right now with J.C. Tran. J.C. just bet 32,000 preflop. Denis moves all in for her last 142. Uh, make out. Norman, it appears the dealer just pulled her cards into the muck. Oh, wow. Did you protect your cards? I don't know. I'm all in. Okay, well, I'll sweep in your cards. Stop right here. Don't do anything for right now. Huh? Don't do anything just now. Okay. Are those her two cards on top of that pile? Don't touch them. I just um, said don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because her cards couldn't be picked out easily, the person in charge had no choice but to declare Estelle's hand invalid. She was forced to put in 32,000 in chips to match JC's initial bet. Somebody this is here. unusual. Denny went all in. The dealer, though, killed her hand, really putting her cards into the muck. I think her hand might be dead. JC and everyone certainly feels for her, but there's nothing they can do. 
Well, I think she's telling the floor supervisor what her cards were. If they can retrieve the cards she said she had from the top of the muck, they apparently will allow her to continue. It might not seem fair, but poker rules are pretty clear about it being the player's job to look after their own cards at all times. If a dealer accidentally mixes a player's cards into the discard pile and they can't be easily found, that's pretty much the end of it. And she stands by helpless. I think Estelle Denny is going to get bad news. Her hand is dead. Her hand is dead. Sure, the dealer should have been more careful, and if he had been, this wouldn't have happened. But dealers are human too. It's an unfortunate and a bit of a contentious situation, but it also teaches a valuable lesson about always keeping your hand safe. Want to see more? Well, before we jump into the next one, be sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss any episode of our videos. Hossein Insan was in a nail-biting heads-up battle for the EPT title against Gleb Tremzin. The tension was palpable as both players were completely dialed in, determined to emerge victorious. And then, in the midst of this intense showdown, an awkward hand unfolded. In the heat of their bluffing battle on the river, Ensan makes a final raise, believing he's pulling off a successful bluff. Little does he know, his hand is actually the strongest one at the table, while Tremzin is left clutching a pair of napkins. Seeing Ensan's chips slide forward, Tremzin assumes he's been caught red-handed and reluctantly mutters, good call. Call, not a call. Ah, Gleb's raise of a super small river bet got a fold before. Pretty good reason to think it might work again. There's the bluff from Tremzin, 2.3 million. It doesn't look like it's gonna work. And Sen re-raises. You call. Cool. You call? Cool? Yeah. You win. I'm just fine. The confusion mounts as Ensign, conceding defeat, reveals his humble pair of fives, assuming Tremzin must have a superior hand. But then, to everyone's surprise, Tremzin proudly reveals his worthless napkins, echoing, yes, good call. Yeah, good call. Uh, there's some confusion here. I think Gleb thought Ensign was calling. Uh-oh. Yeah, I win. Yeah. Yes, I win. Fear combo for six. I said good call. You call, you call. No, no, I said good call. The floor is called over to clear the air. Amid the confusion, Tremzin's words are misinterpreted by Ensign, who believes he needs to match the raise. However, Tremzin vehemently insists that he couldn't possibly have intended to call with such a weak hand. As the floor staff grapples with how to untangle the situation, Ensign intervenes, putting an end to the debate. He decides he doesn't want to pursue any further action and refuses to accept additional chips. It becomes evident that Tremzin had no intention of making a legitimate call, and he has no interest in exploiting the misunderstanding for his own gain. As the events unfold, it's worth noting that Ensign's integrity shines through. Despite his unorthodox playing style, he proves himself to be anything but an angle shooter. Whether or not you believe in karma, it's worth mentioning that Ensign not only won that event, but went on to claim victory in the 2019 main event, walking away with a staggering $10 million prize. Super! Yeah. yeah, another amazing display of sportsmanship. Just be careful. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah sorry for that. It's my mistake, okay. but... But uh, next time, uh, please yeah. don't bluff. Yeah. <laughs> huh? it's, okay. not, it's not good. <laughs> but you bluff also. I have five. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> don't bluff. <laughs> you have nothing. Good call is probably the last compliment Gleb Tremzin. Poker rules leave no room for ambiguity when it comes to verbal declarations. Once you announce a call or a raise, it's binding. There's no going back on it, unlike what you might see in movies where poker scenes lack expert advice. Ivan Freitas appears to have a keen understanding of this rule, and he attempts to exploit it in what has become one of the most contentious poker hands in recent memory. 
In a high-stakes moment on the river, Freitas finds himself with a powerhouse hand, practically holding the nuts. He verbally announces a raise after Eugene's river bet, but instead of adding the required chips, he only tosses in the amount needed to call. Then, in an attempt to backtrack, he claims he only meant to call. Pay the raise. Raise coming. Yeah. I'm sorry, call. What? Uh -oh. You said race. You announced race. Um, speaking. You announced race. No speak English. No way he meant to just call with a full house. However, Freitas is well aware that this tactic won't hold up, and he knows he'll be compelled to follow through with the raise. It's a classic case of Freitas attempting an angle shot, using deception to confuse his opponent and extract additional value from the hand. Recognizing the situation, the floor is summoned to intervene, and it is revealed that Freitas has employed similar tactics in the past, often with exceptionally strong hands. I think this is exactly the same situation that we had already in this tournament, when you did exactly the same move when you had the nuts. I just shared this information with you. Okay? Wow, Freitas has got previous for this. You understand? So I force you to raise now, and you have the option what you do. Twice, uh, you need to put in another. 275. I think this is well handled by Thomas Kremser. He's forcing Freitas to min raise, but he's told Eugene Unite that this is a move that Freitas makes when he's got a monster. Despite the controversy stirred by Freitas' maneuver, Eugene ultimately decides to make the call, considering it's just a minimum raise, and he holds a strong hand in absolute terms. I know we're not supposed to actively root for players, but I sure hope he mucks. Make Freitas look like a chump. He makes the call. Freitas shows the full house. Yeah. No, I know. I heard about this before the tournament started. So ugly. ugly. Move was so dirty. Feel like I need a shower. I heard about this guy. This hand has garnered considerable attention over the years and sparked numerous debates. It serves as a glaring example of an angle shot, particularly given Freitas' history of similar tactics. While the tournament director and other players express their disgust, there's little recourse to punish Freitas. While his actions may be deemed unethical, they technically don't violate any rules. Despite feigning a change of heart, Freitas did announce a raise and eventually added the chips to follow through with it. I'd say the tournament director did the best thing he could to punish Freitas by telling Eugene that this was his trademark move and that he was likely holding the nuts. Well, if you were in the player's shoes, how would you navigate these intense moments at the table? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation burning. See you in the next video.